After this, I may never receive a review code or early access to future Bioware games. And frankly, I'm okay with that. Because after spending 92-ish hours with Dragon Age The Veil God, the irrevocable truth is that it's a disappointing mystic. What was once a franchise celebrated for its deep storytelling and memorable characters now feels hollow and uninspired. The world of Dragon Age has always been a character in its own right, rich with lore and diverse environments that invite exploration. Unfortunately, however, the Valgod doesn't quite hit this mark. The setting feels more like a collection of narrow corridors than the sprawling landscapes we've known to love. Instead of the organic immersive world building that defined previous entries, we're presented with maze-like structures that lack genuine open spaces. It's almost as if Bioware's designers constructed each environment around gameplay mechanics rather than creating a world that feels alive and interconnected. The cities in particular come off as a series of overwrought maps connected by ziplines and awkward traversals. It's a stark contrast to the rich, exploratory feel of its predecessors, leaving players feeling more like participants in a theme park ride than adventurers in a vibrant world. World of Dragon Age has always been more than a mere backdrop, been an integral character steeped in rich lore, vibrant ecosystems, and diverse environments that call out to be explored. From the lush forests of Ferelden to the desert oases of Orle, each setting was not merely a destination, but an invitation into a deeper story. Fans of the series know that immersion is not just about combat or dialogue. It's about being enveloped in a world where every stone tree and alley has a story to tell. Unfortunately, the Valgod struggles to live up to this legacy. My most glaring issues with the Valgard is how its environments feel less like living, breathing worlds and more like disconnected dioramas. The promise of adventure is marred by linear design and an over-reliance on corridors that funnel players from one combat encounter to the next with minimal reward for who explore the path less traveled. This deviation from expansive interconnected maps from Inquisition to narrow maze-like structures was quite jarring, where past entries encouraged players to venture off the beaten path, discovering hidden caves, secret dialogue or unexpected encounters, the Valgard seems to lead you on a preordained tour. This design choice impacts immersion, making each setting feel more like a series of isolated experiences rather than parts of a larger interconnected realm. The cities, which should have been vibrant hubs teeming with life and complexity, fall particularly flat. Instead of the sprawling urban labyrinths full of hidden alleys, bustling markets and shifting political tensions seen in games like Dragon Age Inquisition or Origins, players are presented with what can only be described as overwrought maps. These maps are interconnected by awkward traversal mechanics, such as zip lines and narrow passages that feel like more contrivances to move the player from point A to point B rather than organic parts of the world. The most disheartening aspect is that Bioware has shown in the past that they can do better. The hinterlands in Dragon Age Inquisition, despite its initial reputation as overwhelming, offered a sense of scale and freedom that made exploration rewarding. You were piecing together the lives of NPCs by being able to interact with them, finding lost artifacts and the stories they told, whilst uncovering lore that added depth to your understanding of Thedas. In the Valgard, this feeling of depth is stunted. The story behind each region is really felt through the environment itself, instead it's relayed through exposition or quest text, breaking the golden rule of showing rather than telling. It's not that the Valgard lacks moments of visual brilliance or atmosphere. Bioware has retained its knack for creating visually striking areas, punctuated by breathtaking skies and moody lighting that reinforces the darker themes of the game. However, these impressive visuals serve as mere backdrops to an experience that feels scripted. Even the game's most beautiful environments are just that, beautiful. 
they lacked the lived-in feel that made earlier iterations of Dragon Age captivate. Compounding this issue is how the maze-like design impacts gameplay. Exploration, when it happens, is met with artificial boundaries, invisible walls, locked doors with no narrative justification, or paths that circle back, preventing straying too far from the main objective. This, one of the many things, undermines the player's agency, making it hard to suspend disbelief and immerse oneself in the world. The linearity also impacts replayability. While decisions may alter story outcomes, the environments remain fixed, predictable and unyielding to curiosity. The theme park-like experience of the Veil vale Guard, where you're shuttled between spectacles without genuine freedom, extends beyond just physical space. The game's dungeons and wilderness areas, which should have been opportunities for deeper exploration and player-driven stories, often end up being simple gauntlets. These areas guide the player with overly structured paths, interrupting the flow of exploration with obligatory combat, or to be blunt, pathetic puzzle mechanics that seem more like placeholders than meaningful gameplay elements. The world of Dragon Age has always thrived on the unexpected. Players cherished stumbling upon an abandoned village that told its story through charred homes and torn banners, or finding a secluded grove where rare dialogue plays out, shedding new light on companions' backstories. In the Valgard, these organic storytelling moments are rare. Instead, interactions often feel pre-planned, triggered by stepping onto a certain tile or approaching a checkpoint. Spontaneity that once defined the franchise's worldbuilding is notably absent. Bioware shift in focus from creating vast explorable spaces to curated gameplay focused levels speaks to a broader industry trend but leaves a void in what Dragon Age fans have come to expect. The magic of Thedas is not just in its battles or quests but in its freedom to wander its lands. Pick up threads of forgotten stories and engage in exploration for exploration's sake. The Veil vale God is a stark reminder that a game can look stunning and still feel hollow when the soul of exploration is reduced to a series of checkpoints. The Dragon Age franchise has built a legacy on its ability to weave complex narratives brimming with moral ambiguity, political intrigue and character-driven subplots. With Dragon Age The Veil vale God, Bioware sets out to rekindle that narrative magic, plunging players into a story steeped in tension between realms adrift. However, despite its ambition, the main plot of The Veil vale God lands somewhere between familiar and fragmented struggling to balance the weight of its epic aspirations with the clarity and focus that defined earlier entries. Veil vale God picks up in the aftermath of a cataclysm that has left the very fabric of Thedas fractured, with the Veil vale itself threatening to collapse. Players are thrust into a role of a protagonist, burdened with the untangling of the mysteries of the Fade and stopping the encroaching devastation. From the outset, this premise holds the promise of high stakes, world-altering consequences. However, while the setup is rife with potential, the execution is marred by uneven pacing and a plot that often loses its own thread amongst a tangle of subplots. The main plot introduces key figures whose fates are intertwined with the protagonist's decisions, each carrying their own burdens and motivations. While some of these characters are compelling, Boasting rich backstories and evolving arcs, others fall into predictable tropes or are underutilized. For instance, certain allies present in early missions seem poised for significant roles but fade into the periphery as the story shifts focus. This imbalance detracts from the plot's cohesion and weakens the emotional stakes that drive player investment. The main storyline also suffers from thematic overcrowding, at its core, the Veil vale God aims to tackle the profound question about the consequences of tampering with the Veil vale and the moral cost of wielding power. These themes are gripping and could have been grounded in the narrative, but they are frequently overshadowed by factional conflicts, petty companion squabbles and the ever-present spectre of betrayal. 
Compounding this issue is the game's handling of choices and consequence. The Dragon Age series has long been celebrated for making players feel the weight of their decisions, often faced with no true right answer. The Veil God attempts to maintain this tradition, but the choices presented sometimes lack the narrative heft that made past decisions so memorable. Too often, decisions feel telegraphed, with outcomes that, while feeling impactful in the moment, don't resonate throughout the wider plot. The illusion of choice is present, but the follow-through doesn't always meet expectations. Main antagonistic force in the Valgard, a group that emerges within the shrouded realm of the Fade, initially commands intrigue, their motive shrouded in mystery and wrapped in the ethereal dread of the unknown, set the stage for a memorable foe. Yet as the story unfolds, their motivations and backstory receive uneven treatment. Rather than evolving into multi-dimensional characters, these antagonists sometimes fall into the trap of being mere embodiments of chaos, robbing the story of a more nuanced villain that could parallel the likes of Cypherus or the enigmatic Solus. Middle arc of the game stands as its strongest section, where pacing issues temporarily recede and the narrative takes on a more engaging tempo. Here, players are treated to a blend of high-stakes confrontations and character development that recalls the best moments of the series. Major story beats that pit friends against one another, test alliances and force hard compromises breathe life into the otherwise meandering plot. It's in these moments that Veilgard feels like a Dragon Age fan remembers. Bold, thoughtful and brimming with difficult questions. Fortunately, the climax and resolution struggles to maintain this momentum. While the final act delivers on spectacle and brings key plot lines to a head, it also exposes the story's narrative cracks. The rush to wrap up multiple subplots results in some rushed character arcs and hurried explanations. The emotional payoff that players might expect from a narrative with such sweeping stakes feels slightly muted leaving a bittersweet aftertaste. The consequences of the protagonist's choices are present but lack the depth and lingering impact that could have elevated the finale. Bioware has always excelled in character development, crafting companions that are more than just allies. They're complex, flawed individuals whose stories intertwine with the player's journey. In Dragon Age The Valgard, this tradition is partially upheld. The game introduces a range of new characters that at first glance embody the layer personas fans have come to expect. There are compelling figures with rich backstories, whose personal struggles and motivations align with the larger narrative tapestry of Thedas. However, as the game progresses, cracks begin to show in how these characters are developed and utilized. The most significant flaw lies in the inconsistent depth of character arcs. While a select few companions are given ample time to grow and change, others feel like afterthoughts, present in the critical story moments but without meaningful progression. This uneven approach results in a core group of characters that stand out and resonate, while others blend into the background, never fulfilling their true potential. For example, one companion who starts as an enigmatic rogue with a mysterious past might captivate players with their initial introduction and early interactions. But as the plot evolves, their development stagnates, leaving them as little more than a secondary voice in a pivotal moment. This lack of follow-through can damper player investment, making interactions with certain characters feel obligatory rather than exciting. The absence of consistent growth not only undermines individual relationships but also weakens the overall narrative, as players are less compelled to engage with underdeveloped members of their party. Side content, in my opinion, is an essential component of world building, providing context and depth that makes the game world feel alive. In the Valgard, there are glimpses of this potential. A handful of quests delve into the cultural or historical fabric of Thedas, touching on topics such as ancient conflicts and hidden truths about the Vale. 
these quests stand out and offer moments of genuine discovery and narrative satisfaction. However, they are exceptions rather than the rule. The majority of side missions fail to capitalize on the game's rich setting, feeling superficial in their execution. Tasks involving generic bandit clearouts or simple courier assignments dominate the landscape, leaving the world feeling more like a checklist of activities than an immersive space with stories waiting to be unearthed. What's most disappointing about the Valgard side content is the missed opportunity to intertwine it meaningfully within the main narrative. Side quests that have expanded on key themes or added layers to the main plot are instead kept as standalone activities with little consequence. This detachment lessens the stakes and leaves side content feeling optional in the worst sense of the word. Something to do for completion's sake rather than for a richer narrative experience. Character progression is a fundamental pillar of any RPG, driving play investment and creating a sense of growth throughout the journey. The Valgard introduces skill trees and abilities that initially promise flexibility, but these systems quickly reveal their limitations. The options available often feel cosmetic or incremental, lacking the meaningful impact that defines a truly engaging progression system. Players might find themselves locked into a narrow build path that prioritizes a handful of powerful skills, making alternative strategies feel like inconveniences or unrewarding. True RPG experiences thrive when they empower players to forge distinctive identities. The Veilguard's mechanics push towards homogenization. While there is a range of abilities on offer, many do not synergize in a way that encourages experimentation and unconventional playstyles. This results in a game that may start with intriguing customization options but ultimately leaves players feeling boxed into conventional choices. Similarly, gear and itemization are crucial in enhancing character builds and providing gameplay variety. The Veilguard, however, struggles to make its loot system feel rewarding. While players will find an abundance of gear scattered throughout the game, much of it feels generic, offering only minor stat upgrades without any unique gameplay effects or lore significance. This approach strips away the excitement of finding powerful, game-changing items that turns gear collection into a predictable exercise. The itemization system also lacks thematic depth. Whereas in past Dragon Age games, legendary items came with lore reach backstories or abilities that reinforced the sense of being part of Thedas' storied history. In the Veilguard, the focus on utility over uniqueness results in a system that feels more like an afterthought than an integral part of the game world. Further, one of the other greatest strengths of an RPG is how its mechanics tie into world building. In the Valgard, the RPG systems feel detached from the broader narrative and setting, while previous Dragon Age titles excelled in making the world react dynamically to player progression and decisions. Valgard's world often feels static. Gaining a new skill or completing a pivotal quest rarely changes the way the world interacts or perceives the player. This disconnection between mechanics and narrative weakens the immersion and reduces the feeling of being an influential figure in the game's universe. Gear choices and character progression should all work to enhance the player's connection to the world. However, in the Valgard, these elements often feel compartmentalized. The game misses chances to intertwine these systems with world events or lore, making the player's journey feel less impactful and isolated from the greater narrative landscape. Dragon Age The Valgard, the combat system feels somewhat familiar, borrowing core mechanics from its most recent action-based predecessor. At its heart, it's a blend of tactical pausing with real-time engagements, allowing players to execute synchronized attacks and then dive back into the fast-paced battle. While I found this system initially engaging, the true potential is never realized due to the lack of depth and progression as the game unfolds. The initial combat experience is bolstered by a range of abilities and flashy animations, making encounters a visual feast 
where players have a toolkit of skills very based on class selection, providing a number of options that cater to different playstyles. However, I found that this variety is superficial, as I quickly realized that many of the skills lack strategic interplay between abilities that could elevate encounters. The combat system's surface level complexity fades as it becomes clear that encounters can often be won by relying on a handful of effective, repetitive tactics. Enemy AI also fails to provide the challenge needed to keep battles engaging as enemies often adhere to rigid patterns, making them easy to outmaneuver and defeat once recycled tactics are recognized. The static nature of enemy AI diminishes the need for adaptive strategies. Battles that should demand quick thinking and tactical adjustment instead turn into a routine exercise, with players repeating the same moves and rotations without the risk of unexpected developments. The absence of dynamic AI behavior means that battles often lack tension, and the excitement of victory is dulled when the outcome feels predetermined. The Veil God does offer an assortment of abilities tailored to different playstyles, from high damage spells to defensive maneuvers. But balancing feels uneven. Certain skills emerge as far more powerful and effective than others, creating disparity that discourages experimentation. And I found myself relying on a small subset of skills, sidelining other potentially interesting abilities that feel too weak or situational to be viable. While some abilities have impressive animations and seem powerful on the surface, their actual impact in combat can feel underwhelming. A spell that takes time to cast or require precise positioning should deliver a satisfying payoff. But in the Veil God, many high cost skills lack that reward. This imbalance not only affects combat variety, but also limits the sense of progression as players level up and unlock new skills that don't significantly alter their playstyle or combat effectiveness. One of the hallmarks of the Dragon Age franchise has been its ability to blend real-time action with tactical combat, allowing players to pause, assess the battlefield and issue commands to their party members. Veilguard aims to retain this feature, but it feels less impactful than in previous titles. The tactical pause mode allows for strategic positioning and ability use, but its necessity is undermined by simplified encounters that really demand such an approach. Part of the issue lies in encounter design itself. Battles are often structured in straightforward ways that don't encourage creative tactics or careful positioning. The lack of environmental hazards, enemy variety and composition, all objectives that require strategic thinking makes the tactical mode feel like an optional feature rather than an essential tool. This creates combat scenarios that fail to push players to fully engage with all aspects of the combat system, from strategic party coordination to precise ability timing and everything in between. The Valgard's combat system may falter in depth, it certainly excels in presentation. Animations are smooth and visually striking, with spells erupting in bursts of color and melee attacks delivering a satisfying impact. The visual feedback enhances the immediacy of combat, making each swing of a weapon or casting of a spell feel connected to player actions. This attention to detail elevates the moment-to-moment -moment experience, even when the underlying mechanics leave something to be desired. However, this visual spectacle comes at a cost. The game's reliance on flashy effects can sometimes obscure key combat details, making it difficult to track enemy position or anticipate attacks in crowded fights. Even though I do appreciate the visual splendor, it does come at the cost of being able to read the battlefield, particularly during more chaotic encounters. Dragon Age The Valgard attempts to recapture the series' story charm but ultimately falters. While it boasts familiar faces and visually captivating settings, these strengths are superficial at best. The game's character development is uneven, limiting emotional connections, and its RPG mechanics feel disappointingly shallow. 
optimization and gear systems lack impact, failing to encourage creative play or meaningful progression. Exploration, once a defining trait of the franchise, is streamlined into linear paths that stifle player agency and discovery. Side quests, though abundant, often delve into uninspired tasks, contributing little to the world's lore or narrative depth. Even combat, with its initial visual flair, soon reveals itself as repetitive and lacking in strategic variety. The Veilguard plays it far too safe, staying firmly within established boundaries without the innovation or complexity that made earlier entries memorable. It simply doesn't do the legacy of the Dragon Age franchise any justice, nor does it satisfy the demands of a modern, impactful RPG experience. Therefore, Dragon Age of the Valgod is really difficult to recommend. For those seeking a rich and immersive RPG, this title may be better left waiting for a significant price drop, or to be honest, avoid it altogether. Thank you so much for watching, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Stay nerdy.